Zionist media sway U.S. foreign policy, pushing it into war, says analyst. So the Zionist-controlled American media are the main determinants of the U.S. foreign policy and have been pushing the U.S. into waging wars in the Middle East during the past decade. It says the U.S. would not have gone to war against Iraq and destroyed the country over a decade ago were it not for the lies that the U.S. media, the very Israeli-centric pro-Zionist American media, peddled to American people, where they were fueling all of this hysteria about Saddam Hussein and his supposed weapons program, said Mark Glenn. It says the media in this country are more powerful than the government itself. Our elected officials don't even do our bidding. They do the bidding, as I said, that is set by, basically, Israel. And we have this, uh, Israel should do its best to bring down Syria's Assad. Former Zionist Mossad chief uh, Mir Dagan said Wednesday that the entity of occupation should be helping those forces trying to oust Syrian president. He says, as the Jewish state, Israel should be happy to see the downfall of those brutal forces against its own people. He guess he said this at President Shimon Peres's Facing Tomorrow conference in Jerusalem. He says that anyone who can raise a voice must do it, especially the state of Israel. He predicted Assad's fall would weaken Iran's regional influence and also weaken Lebanese resistance party of Hezbollah, allowing Lebanon to get to a different political situation. Israel urges U.S. action over Syrian chemical weapons from April 26. The U.S. should consider military action to curb Syrian chemical weapons after Washington went public with suspicions that they have been used in the country's, basically, invasion by foreign, foreign uh, entities. Pro-Israeli U.S. lawmakers urge bombing Syria bases, arming militants, and invasion. Fervently pro-Israeli Senators John McCain of Arizona and Lindsey Graham of South Carolina further cited widely challenged claims by the Israeli regime of chemical weapons used in Syria to urge swift Washington action to secure these chemical weapons. Then you have kind of like the reaction to this in the media. It says here, U.S. weighs no-fly zone, ground forces among options to topple Assad regime. So this is from the 27th. It says military action over Syria's suspected use of chemical weapons could backfire. This is very, very complex, says the Israeli ambassador to the U.S. It goes on here and it says that um, there could be collateral damage to civilians if the agents are dispersed and under international law the attacker would be at fault. It says that's why Israel is not making, urging any action by the United States and Syria. Israel says it's not seeking U.S. intervention in Syria. It says here, we never asked nor did we encourage the U.S. to take military action in Syria, says Mr. Steinitz at a conference in New York sponsored by the Jerusalem Post. And we're not making any comparison or linkage with Iran, which is a completely different matter. So you kind of make up your own mind on that. This is my website. Uh, welcome to it. GGNonline.com and on YouTube, DDarko2012, DDarko2013 are my YouTube channels. Uh, the headlines and links should be in YouTube's video description. So, but I'm not even sure why I even put polls up there because they get messed with blogger, whoever it is, because I see votes that are basically changed or messed up along with videos that, that weren't even viewable. YouTube videos weren't even viewable anymore on here as well along with pro-Israeli ads that they put on there. I guess it's some kind of joke. Syrian Prime Minister survives bomb attack. So this is kind of big news. This along with the missiles they, uh, basically aimed at a Russian plane. Syrian state media said Prime Minister Wal Haki escaped unharmed from an assassination attempt Monday in Damascus. So it says here this strike follows other high-profile bombings in the capital, including at the Interior Ministry in December. But... Um, these, I believe, are either SAS or Mossad uh, operations. Uh, they're getting help from these entities. Halki's assassination attempt proves political bankruptcy and military failure, which I agree with. Commenting on the assassination attempt that targeted Syrian top uh, official on Monday, Hezbollah issued a statement which referred to the barbaric hand of criminality that has been stretched again, aiming at the assassination of Syrian prime minister in the Syrian capital. So they say it was basically a sign of uh, them failing amongst the terrorist militant groups run by international conspirators who do not want the Syrian state and the people to maintain the effective contribution to the issues of, you know, Islam, uh, the Islamic and Arab region. But it also has to do with running pipelines, oil, natural gas, and stuff, and it's all business. But he says here the targeting of the prime minister, uh, along with the prior assassination of the most prominent symbol of religious tolerance and Islamic values, uh, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed said uh, Bhutti, so, and he was a Sunni cleric, and he was blown up or killed in a mosque by Sunni, uh, Sunni terrorists, the quote rebels.
Missiles fired at Russian plane with 159 passengers on board flying over Syria. The last time something similar to this happened is when Turkey started to skyjack uh, planes that were coming from Russia into Syria. Two missiles were reportedly fired at a Russian plane with at least 159 passengers on board that was flying over Syrian territory. Russian officials admit the jet faced danger but are not take, uh, talking of a targeted attack. So the Syrian officials said the unidentified forces launched two ground-to-air missiles which exploded in the air very close to a civilian aircraft belonging to a Russian airline. So this is kind of a stab at the Russians too, um, along with this uh, assassination attempt on the Prime Minister. This, this seems like a larger operation than, than just the rebels, in my own opinion. It says the pilots reportedly managed to maneuver the plane in time, however, saving the lives of the passengers. It is believed that the aircraft was intentionally targeted, but it remains unclear whether the attackers knew it was Russian or not. Russian experts have already voiced their doubts that a passenger plane could actually perform this kind of maneuver that would allow it to avoid a missile attack, saying planes are usually attacked either from the side or from above. A pilot could have not have seen these missiles and basically maneuver, maneuvered away from them. New York Times tells truth about Syria. It says the neocons unfazed. Shockingly, or shocking as it may seem, the New York Times managed to tell the truth about Syria today in a quote saying, Nowhere in rebel-controlled Syria is there a secular fighting force to speak of. The conclusion to this revelation is not, unfortunately, stop arming the non-existent secularists. Rather, it is to intervene even more and even more quickly. Stephen Heidemann at the Orwellian war-promoting U.S. Institute of Peace sums up the war as quoted in the Times story. The challenge, he said, is to end the conflict before the opportunity to create a system of governance not based on militant Islamic law is lost. In other words, the U.S. Institute of Peace and its appropriately post-apocalyptic megachurch-looking $188 million new building urges the U.S. to change the regime in Syria as quickly as possible. Elizabeth Obagi of the Institute for the Study of War, a Kagan family franchise that studies war in the context of how can we get more of it, was quoted in the piece saying, My sense is that there are no seculars. That is odd as her boss, Kimberly Kagan, has written a policy recommendation paper it says the United States should fully support the secular opposition of Bashar al-Assad through the provision of funds, weapons, equipment, and training. In other words, the Institute for the Study of More Wars knows that there are no secular fighters, but urges the U.S. to arm secular fighters anyways. The U.S. and its allies have created the problem of Islamist radicals running the insurgency in Syria basically by aiding them and funding them. But neocons like Kimberly Kagan are unfazed by such revelations. And they say with a straight face that the only solution to the problem caused by U.S. interventionism is uh, more, harder, stronger U.S. interventionism in Syria and the Syrian insurgencies. Lastly, the New York Times reveals the truth in Syria. The insurgents are al-Qaeda, but its conclusion is predictably that we need more intervention in Syria on behalf of the insurgents. The U.S. and Qatar agree to support terrorism. They agree to strengthen illegal armed support to terrorists in Syria. President Obama met at the White House with the Emir of Qatar and in the context of a series of meetings with regional leaders to address the rising violence in Syria. So this year, Obama stressed a need for Washington and Doha to cooperate closely with terrorist groups in Syria. They want to facilitate the possibility that the present government of Bashar al-Assad will leave power and allow the opposition to take power. Both countries agreed to extend and strengthen cooperation in financing illegal armed opposition groups operating on Syrian soil. These same people or groups are responsible for hundreds of terrorist attacks that have left tens of thousands dead and injured. Let's not forget displaced. Better figure this one out, guys. He stressed the need for both countries to cooperate closely in his view to end the killings that are happening there by strengthening those that are responsible for the killings. Germany fears return of extremists from anti-government fighting in Syria. I've already covered this before, but it goes on here and it says that German security officials say they are worried about the return of German extremists who are fighting alongside foreign-backed militants in Syria. Europe's jihadists are easily flying to Turkey without a visa and then crossing the border into Syria. U.S. Germany send troops, Patriot missiles to Turkish Syria border from December 15, 2012. So they're worried about it, right? They're worried about the blowback of uh, funding and, uh, and uh, backing these terrorists. And they even have U.S. German troops manning Patriot missiles in the Turkish Syrian border. So, you know, they're bringing this on themselves. So you can't really feel sorry for them. Then next up, we have Syria denies use of chemical weapons. U.S. in hysteria over uh, the losses of terrorists. Or rebels. Rights groups say recent government air and missile strikes have caused dozens of civilian casualties in the terrorist-held areas of Aleppo. 
The American hysteria about the use of chemical weapons was caused by the success of the Syrian Arab army in striking terrorists, said al Zubi, was quoted by uh, State TV. It says the government refers to rebels as terrorists. Christian refugees in Syria are forced back to Iraq by the war. It says we were afraid of being kidnapped, it says a 43-year-old Christian explaining why he and his family fled Syria to return to their native Iraq. It says we mainly fear the free Syrian army. That doesn't make any sense because they're being targeted by the rebels, the opposition. So if you go down a couple of paragraphs, they actually admit it by saying many Christians in Syria look to Assad's regime for protection, but within battle, President himself fighting for survival, they found themselves unprotected and vulnerable. And talk about the report of kidnapping of two Orthodox bishops, which still I haven't heard any reports whether they're actually found or not, if that was confirmed. Uh, but we know who's leading the kidnapping for financing their terrorist activities. Over 45,000 Syrian refugees returned home from Jordan since July. Over the last nine months, 45,000, almost 46,000 refugees have agreed to voluntarily leave the camp and return home. The refugee camp has been a scene of frequent rioting as refugees protest against the living conditions in the desert camp where water and electricity are scarce and services are poor. U.S. trainers and Salafists uh, jihadis in Jordan. So go in there and check it out. Link will be posted. It's something that we already covered before. It's a story that the U.S. military is training Syrian opposition fighters. The rebels or the terrorists in Jordan got another boost in a story posted by the BBC. An unnamed BBC reporter interviewed an unnamed uh, senior commander from the Free Syrian Army who described this training uh, mostly dealing with small arms, not the heavier stuff that the rebels desire and the American accents of the trainers. Just a quick correction there about the uh, Free Syrian Army. I thought it was for some reason I see that. I haven't seen that in a while, the Free Syrian Army, because no one really calls it that. I thought they were talking about the, the Syrian Arab Army. So that's a quick correction. You know, it does make sense that these uh, that these people, these Christians and that, were ma mainly f uh, fearing the Free Syrian Army or the rebels. Talking about the training of Salafists in Jordan, Salafist leader was interviewed uh, by the BBC. It says here he's a known uh, to what? To be uh, basically he's participating in an Al-Qaeda-linked plot to attack a base housing U.S. soldiers in Jordan, but was later released. He has said he claims to have 500 Salafist fighters in Syria. He says the goal is to basically get an Islamic government that establishes God's Sharia law. So it's pretty obvious in this quote here we're talking about how um, they're not getting enough uh, heavier weapons and stuff like that. And lack of funds has driven many people to join Al-Qaeda or Al-Nasra, which was basically joined up with Al-Qaeda recently. There used to be no more than 10 or 15 Al-Nasra Al-Qaeda fighters. It says, I used to know all their names. Now there are thousands. This is, of course, because the U.S. and the West don't want to admit that they're funding and, and using terrorists as a proxy military force to invade Syria. That's what it is. It's an invasion by foreigners. Uh, Syrian missiles hit Jordan, no casualties, as strikes target border area rebels. It says stray missiles cross into Jordan. It says the official had confirmed that several Syrian missiles have crossed the border near the village of Thenabat, so setting some farmland on fire, but no casualties. It says here the cross-border hits appear to have been incidental to a campaign of airstrikes against rebel-held territory along the Syrian side of the border, but also follow warnings earlier this week from Syria about Jordan's support for the rebels. Their support for the rebels has been escalating dramatically in recent weeks, with more U.S. trainers showing up and the announcement that Jordan will lead the arming of the rebels. The U.K. and France are barring the U.N. Uh, inspection. It's a Syrian ambassador to the U.N., says Britain and France are trying to undermine Damascus' official request from the United Nations to investigate chemical weapons. They just want to do the certain parts where it actually happened, but the UN say, no, we've got to do the whole country. So. so it says here they claim that they're trying to repeat the Iraqi scenario in Syria through questioning its sovereignty by opening its borders to uh, inspections by the UN under the pretext of chemical weapons use. Also, he said that Western states do not want an investigation to take place, suggesting that they know full well that the anti-government militants that they're backing use chemical agents in the town against civilians and government officials. The EU is going to purchase or allow purchases of Syrian oil from opposition, so Libya Redux. They're expected to ease the Syrian oil embargo to allow purchases of crude oil from the terrorists. Libyan violence disrupts international oil company operations. Heavily armed militias are invading oil fields and demanding jobs. Libyan foreign ministry surrounded by men with anti-aircraft guns. We're demanding Parliament pass a law banning Gaddafi-era officials from holding posts.
Iraq said to halt Al Jazeera's licenses and closes Jordanian border.